It's now time for Mark Hankins, Faith for Every Nation. Mark and Trina train and equip leaders in every nation through church services, leadership conferences, mission trips, and media. Get ready for a direct and joyful message about how to grow in your faith and learn more about who you are in Christ. Now, let's join Mark and Trina. So we just want to look at several parts of your identification with Christ, who you are in Christ, and let me give you a working definition of identification. Identification. The word identification means to make identical. To make identical. It means to consider or treat as one and the same. To consider or treat as one and the same. Actually, one dictionary said sameness. The same identical condition. Same identical life. So it says sameness are the fact of being the same in all qualities under consideration. The other words would be your identity. Your identity or who you are. Or to identify, to put oneself in another's place, to share feelings or problems. Identify. Or the next word would be identical as in identical twins. And so one translation says, you were twinned with Christ. Twinned with Christ. Or you could say God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every person. All right, let's try that one more time. God did in Christ what he wanted to do in every man or in every person or in every human a new kind of human. Or you could say it this way, God put into Christ what he wanted to put in every man, in every person. This is your identification with Christ. So look at 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. And the apostle Paul, this is primarily what we call Paul's revelation, 2 Corinthians 5, 17. It says, therefore, if any any man or anyone, if anyone is in Christ, if anyone is in Christ. So we're not just talking about attending church. We're not talking about just being in church. We're talking about you being in Christ. If anyone, any person is in Christ, he is a new creature, a new creation. Old things have passed away. Behold, everything has become new. In other words, he describes what happened when you and I made Jesus the Lord of our life. He said, God's definition of the new birth is you are now in Christ. Dad Hagen said it this way. I listened to him when I was a teenager. And he said, you look a lot better in Christ than you do outside of him. Then when I was 17 years old, Dad Hagen came to my dad's church and he said, one of the best ways to study the New Testament is to go through Paul's letters or Paul's revelation and every time you see the two words in Christ, in him or in whom, circle or underline those two words because they describe something you are and they describe something you have because you are now in Christ. So I found out there's about 130 in Christ, in him, or in whom scriptures. 130. So I had a really good friend, and we spent all of our spare time studying in Christ, in him, in whom scriptures when I was just a teenager. So we'd write it down the King James Version, and then we would compare Uh, different translations to see what they had to say about it. And so when he says, if anyone's in Christ, they're a new creature. The word new means new in kind or new in quality. It actually means unheard of before. 
unheard of before. Or some have said it means a new breed or a new species of being that never existed before. Hallelujah. And so God did something in Christ that had never happened before. He decided to make a new kind of human, a new kind of mankind. And he made Christ the prototype of a new creation and a new kind of human that never existed before. When you read the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, they tell you what happened to Christ. But Paul's letters, Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians, Paul's letters tell you what happened in Christ. All right, let's try it one more time. When you read the four Gospels, they tell you what happened to Christ, or they'll tell you what man saw. When you read Paul's letters, he tells you what happened in Christ, and he tells you what God saw. Hallelujah. Amen. So when you understand what happened, when you made Jesus the Lord of your life, then that becomes the foundation of your faith, and that is your identification or your identity Uh, That's who you are in Christ. You're not struggling to make it so. You're not trying to make it so. It's not someday going to be so. It's happened, amen, because God's grace produced that for you. And all you did is believe it and receive it. Amen. So he says you're a new creature in Christ. So those two words are key words in Paul's letters or Paul's revelation. I like what James Stalker, P.C. Nelson said things about Paul's letters. They said, Paul's letters contain the thoughts that Jesus carried away from this world unuttered. They are the advanced teachings of the Lord Jesus Christ. Or if you want to see the advanced teachings of Jesus, then you read Romans, Corinthians, Galatians, Ephesians, Colossians. In other words, Paul tells you the gospel post-resurrection which means something happened on the cross. Something happened because of the blood of Jesus. Something happened in his death. Something happened in his burial. Something happened in his resurrection that changes everything in your life. Your whole identity is changed. You no longer have to go to Ancestry.com. Come on, you no longer have to let somebody tell you who you are. You just go to the Word of God and you find yourself in Christ. Everything God did in Christ, He did it for you, and it's set to the credit of your account, just like you were there. Amen? Amen? So I'm going to show you uh, several identification with Christ scriptures uh, and look at these real quickly, Galatians 2.20. And then we'll look at um, this version, the King James Version. We'll look at a few different translations. This is where Paul says, by the way, Paul calls himself in 2 Corinthians 12, verse 2, a man in Christ. 2 Corinthians 12, 2, if you want to write that down. Paul said, I knew a man in Christ. Whether in the body or out of the body, I could not tell. Such a man ascended to the third heaven. So we know Paul's talking about himself, a man in Christ. But notice in 2 Corinthians 5, 17, Paul says what's true of a man in Christ is true of any man in Christ. Are y'all still here? So it's not just Paul's testimony, but this is the testimony of every believer. All right, you got Galatians 2, 20. Here's what it says in the King James. It says, I am. All right, we just, we just got hung up on the first two words. He said, I am. I am. In other words, Paul says, let me tell you what has determined my identity. This is who I am. I am, and then he says, crucified with Christ. Crucified with Christ. 
He said, nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh, a lot of good stuff in Galatians 2.20. It actually is the confession of faith for every believer. That means your faith must have an in Christ factor. In other words, you're going to learn about faith. And I heard Dad Hagen teach on faith, and as soon as I heard him, I thought, man, the authority of the believer is phenomenal. Yeah, yeah come on, whosoever shall say, he'll have whatsoever he saith. I thought, that is amazing. So in understanding how faith works, then Dad Hagen came along and said, there are several steps to the highest kind of faith. In other words, if you want to take your faith to a higher level, yes, sir. he said the first thing you do is study who you are in Christ. Amen. So I just decided that's going to, what I'm going to do first. Amen. In other words, I call this um, resurrection faith Amen. or identification faith, in Christ faith. So it's not just kind of trying to have faith. Paul says, my faith has been totally influenced by my identification with Christ. That I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. Amen. The life I now live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul said, I live by this identification faith, my identity and who I am in Christ that you're not what your mama made you. You're not what your daddy made you. You're not what your mistakes made you. You're not what environment made you. You're the workmanship of God, and you've been recreated in Christ Jesus. Sometimes people say, well, if you knew what happened to me, you'd know why I'm the way I am. Listen close. A lot of difficult things can happen to people. But what happened to Jesus is greater than anything that has ever happened to you. Instead of looking at what happened to you, look to what happened to Jesus. Amen. And Romans 5.20 in Lovett's translation says, King James says, where sin abounded, grace did much more abound. Lovett's translation says, God's work in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by Adam's fall. All right, I better say that one more time. God's work in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by Adam's fall. And listen, I know that Adam's sin did a lot of damage, but God's work in Christ far exceeds any damage done to us by Adam's fall. The power of the blood of Jesus and the power of the Word of God. So in studying your identification with Christ, let me give you a couple of other translations real quickly. One translation says, I consider myself as having died, and now I'm enjoying a second existence, which is simply Jesus using my body. All right, we'll try that one more time. <laughs> I consider myself as having died. I was crucified with Christ. Amen. Amen. Your identification with Christ. Amen. Will bring an end to certain things in your life. And so Paul says that in Romans 6, 6. He says, knowing this, our old man, our old man, the old person we used to be. Our old man was crucified with Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth we should not serve sin. So he says, you reckon yourself to be dead indeed to sin, but alive unto God. And then he says, for sin shall not have dominion over you. So when he says, knowing this, our old man, other translations say, our old sinful self, Our old sinful self, the old person we used to be. One translation says, my former evil identity was crucified with Christ. One translation says, my old rebel self. Oh, I don't want y'all to look at that. My old rebel self 
was crucified with Christ. Yes. How many believe that death can bring an end to a lot of bad behavior? Yes. Yes. Amen. And so he says that happened in Christ. And if you want to go ahead and end it with your own death, as far as some people want to end it and they commit suicide, the problem is that you cannot pull off a resurrection. But if you're crucified with Christ, he has the power to produce a resurrection, and it don't even take three days anymore. In other words, you're identified with his death. What happened to Jesus in our behalf? Your identification with Christ. Other translations say it this way. I identified myself completely with Christ. Come on now, people got a lot of different identities and stuff like that. But he just says, my identification with Christ supersedes every other identity people try to give me. Amen. 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 And so you see your identification with Christ in his death in his burial, and we'll show you this, in his resurrection. Now, there's two ordinances in the church, two ordinances that you and I practice as believers. And number one is water baptism. Water baptism shows your identification with Christ, and you actually act it out in water baptism publicly, which shows your identification with Christ, that you were buried together with him, raised up together with him so you walk in newness of life. And so that's your identification in water baptism. The next one ought to blow your mind. The next one is what we call communion or the Lord's Supper, where you take the bread, which is his body, you take the cup, which is his blood, and now you are now in union with Christ, his blood, his body, in you. And he said, and when you do that, you do show. You do show the Lord's death until he comes again. Did you know the word show there is the word promulgate? The word promulgate means to put a law or decree into operation by an official declaration. So every time, every time you receive communion, you are saying, devil, it is illegal for you to put anything on me that Jesus already took in my behalf because I'm identified with Christ. Hallelujah. So when sickness comes, you go, hold it. That's illegal. I'm identified with Christ. When depression tries to come, you say, hold it, that's illegal, I'm identified with Christ. When poverty tries to come, you say, hold it, ah, that's illegal because I'm redeemed from the curse of the law and I'm blessed coming in and blessed going out. That's my identification with Christ. Hallelujah. So you do show, show who you showing. Everybody that's watching, it's a public declaration. So I was preaching in Mexico City a few, a couple of years ago, and when I used this illustration where Paul talks about communion, then my interpreter interrupts me and he says, we know the word promulgate, show. We know that word. He said, that's the word we use in a wedding. The final pronouncement in the wedding is I now pronounce you husband and wife, and these two are now one. Come on. When you take communion, you say, I now pronounce that I'm in union with Christ and the same life that's in him and the same righteousness that is in him is in me. And that shows your identification with Christ To who? To every devil that is watching. Are y'all still here? You say, why? Because I want to make sure that I'm registered in hell. You say, what do you mean? Well, every angel that's watching, but also every devil that's watching. Acts chapter 19. Come on, seven sons of Sceva. 
They tried to cast out devils, and they were religious people. And they tried to cast out devils in the name of Jesus, who Paul preaches. And the devil said, I know Jesus, and I know Paul, but who are you? I want to know who you are. And the devil jumped on them, <laughs> beat them up, and it says, and they ran out naked and wounded. You ain't supposed to be running from the devil. Come on now. He's supposed to be running from you. So these guys were religious, but they had no personal identification with Christ. All right, let's try this again. I said these people were religious. But the moment you make Jesus the Lord of your life, the devil knows when you get up in the morning. He knows where you're at right now. He knows when you come into town. He knows what street you came in on because you are the one that has the same life, same authority that's in Christ himself. Yeah. Woo. Yes. Ha, ha, ha. Yeah. What does that mean? I'm not trying to get it. I don't have to produce it. Jesus got it for me. It's the grace of God. That's who you are. You're watching Mark Hankins Ministries Faith for Every Nation. Have you ever struggled to find your identity and God's purpose for your life? Many people identify with their race or nationality. Some identify with their careers. Others pick a sports figure or celebrity. Some people even identify themselves with their past. Many people live and die and never really find their true identity. When we see what God has done for us in Christ, the reality of redemption will swallow up all our former identities. In this brand new CD set, The In Christ Identity, Mark Hankins teaches four brand new messages on finding out your true identity in Christ. God is planting a whole new crop of righteousness, wisdom, redemption, sanctification, blessing, joy, and victory on the inside of you. Put on the new man by declaring who you are in Christ. Learn your true identity with the book, Taking Your Place in Christ. You have a supernatural identity. Your gift of any amount will help Pastor Mark and Trina Hankins train believers around the world. Order today by calling 318-767-2001 or visit markhankins.org. Take your place in Christ today. Thank you so much for joining us for the program today as my parents have been talking about taking your place in Christ. What a life-changing revelation when you find out who you are in Christ, what you have in Christ, what you can do through Christ. So this is a powerful, powerful message. We will send you this book, Taking Your Place in Christ, for your gift of any amount. That's how much we believe in the message. That's how much we wanna make sure it gets to you. So your gift of any amount will send you this book. And also your partnership with Mark Hankins Ministry is making a difference. Your partnership helps my parents go all over the world, preach and teach this message of who you are in Christ. And this is empowering believers. It's transforming lives. So this message, we want to make sure it gets as far and as wide as it can. Because of your donations, we're also able to translate the books into many, many various languages. This book alone is translated into Spanish, Vietnamese, Arabic, so it is making a difference all around the world. Thank you for believing in us. Thank you for believing in this message. Thank you for partnering with us. It is making a difference. I'm Alicia Hankins Moran. Thank you for joining us today and have a great day. The Mark Hankins Ministries app makes it easy for you to watch the latest TV broadcast. Listen to unlimited full sermons by Mark and Trina. Read our daily devotional and stay connected with upcoming events. Download the app today on any smart device. Simply search Mark Hankins Ministries. Start feeding your faith at any time and anywhere. 
Join Mark and Trina Hankins for an hour of powerful teaching live Monday through Friday on Facebook and YouTube at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. Everyone can join In Christ Bible School. Catch the spirit of faith and move the mountains in your life. Watch live wherever you are and learn who you are in Christ. That's live at 10 a.m. Central Standard Time. My name is Pastor Cornelius uh, Tobing. Uh, I'm, I'm from Papua New Guinea. Um, I've been pastoring Word of Faith Church for the last uh, 14 years. And uh, uh, it has been basically the Word of God, that the Gospel that has uh, brought us this far. Well, Mark Hankins, uh, I think we got connected on the video. I was in Bible school uh, going for my diploma with Rema, that was 2015. He came on, he was speaking, he was teaching on video. Me and my wife, we went back to school uh, 2015 and 16. And just how he present the gospel was different. Uh, uh, not just the principles, not just the, the word, but everything, yeah. He brought the gospel and into his simplest form, you know. I went to his meeting in Australia, I don't know Mark, uh, but uh, because we just love the way he, he ministers and he presents the gospel. We were surprised that he called us uh, to come to Papua New Guinea. And uh, that's the biggest miracle in my life. It's another thing to hear the word, but it's another thing to catch the spirit of that word. And so we caught that spirit and when Mark came, uh, it was like revival. And yeah, and it's never been the same again. And I always say this, and I shout it at the top of my voice, it will never be the same again. For the first time Mark came, you know, uh, uh, his giving was different. I mean, uh, for a new person to come to a place, Mark didn't come to get anything from us. He came to bless us. Uh, he came and not only to bless us with the word, but he came and also You know, I mean it's a saying everywhere, they're only coming for your money. Mark didn't come that way, you know. He came to bless us. Yeah, he blessed us significantly and help us build our the office for the school. So we had we host the school and the ministry has helped us to build the, the units for the lecturers. Yeah. Thank you for watching Mark Hankins Ministries Faith for Every Nation. For more information on how to build your faith, visit markhankins.org. You can access many free word resources to help you find who you are in Christ. Stay connected with us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, or our YouTube channel. Thank you for watching.